Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and this terrible angle of me. I thought this was it. This ain't it. <laughs> this ain't cute. But I will be brief because have you seen how long the story time video is? It's it's a doozy. I've already edited it. Edited it. <laughs> it is so funny, so entertaining. You're not going to even want to skip through. So just go grab a snack while you're at it. But we are throwing it back to some college stories because that is when I peaked. And now I am boring. I am worthless to the YouTube community. I gotta keep throwing it back to my college stories. Do you know what the best and the worst thing about college is? The people. Now some of them are wild, crazy, fun, super sweet. Those are your lifetime besties. Shout out to Bree and Haley, but you won't see this because you barely watch my videos, but thank you. <laughs> And then the other half of people, you have no idea how they made it this far in life in one piece. They have no common sense, no compassion, stupid, <laughs> like it's, it's maddening because now you're like, great, I'm glad we're at the same college, getting the same degree with the same opportunities in life. Scratch that because like who cares about college? It doesn't matter because everyone has encountered that psycho roommate. People love to hear those roommate horror stories that make you cringe. And I'm about to dish it to you right now in this story time video. But if you do love this video, give it a like. If you've had a psycho roommate, leave a comment. On to the story time. Welcome back to my channel. We're excited to tell the story. I have been wanting to tell the story for a very, very long time. Okay, so let's just get into the story. I'm taking you all the way back with me to freshman year of college, journalism 101. The teacher decided he wanted to do a partner project and knowing that none of us wanted to be friends with one another, therefore we didn't know anybody, he decided to pick the partners. And so I was assigned to Aubrey. She was this girl who was as blind as a bat who chose to sit in the back, and she looked exactly like this other girl. So I, I, didn't, I didn't know who Aubrey was. I remember she specifically told me she didn't think that this college was a good fit, she wasn't really getting along with everybody, and that she wanted to transfer. She was just handing me a red flag. Nobody likes me already, okay, here. I was such a nice, sincere person. I told her that she should stick it out stay at least another semester, and make my life a living hell. So we didn't end up hanging out freshman year after that, which, you know, <laughs> thank you. But I know you had something to do with placing her on my floor sophomore year. And we bumped into each other, and then we started hanging out. Okay, so when we first hung out, I just could not see the red flags. So what I saw when she talked about journalism was that she had this passion and was a go-getter. What I didn't really see or know was the fact that she loyally followed all of my work with Seventeen Magazine and thought most likely that I had some in with the magazine as some connection up in the New York area. Whenever I had an idea or a thought about something, she would always agree with it. And what I should have noticed is that I was doing all the talking and she was just saying yes to whatever I said. But what I saw was that we were on the same mindset. This girl was destined to be my best friend. And that is when I was the one who did this? I think we should room together. <laughs> yes, that was me. It was me who said it. Okay, so after we made this verbal agreement to be roommates, Aubrey decides that she's going to be herself. And so I remember with the dorm that we were in, it didn't automatically lock. The only lock we had was this deadbolt. So if we all left or if it was nighttime, we would flip the lock but usually we didn't lock it there was never a need to until Aubrey decided that she could make an entrance whenever she wanted to so if we had dinner plans there she was in my common room 
And one time I remember I, I said that since we stayed up late, she could blow dry her hair in her common room because her roommates were giving her much sass about it because they went to bed right at 10 p.m. and she did a late shower. So I you know, told her one time that she could do this. Well then pretty much every other night, she, I would hear someone come into my common room and use the hair dryer and all of my roommates had to suffer embarrassingly from my decision to let her come in. And it was awkward because I only told her she could do this one time, but she kept doing it again and again. And sometimes I wasn't even in the common room. I wasn't even there. Sometimes I was in my room busy with something and I would, I just hear her voice. Then I'd hear the hairdryer go and I just, oh my God. So it got to a point where we had to lock the door while we were inside. And sometimes she would be knocking on the door and we would all get really quiet because we couldn't stand it. She would, you know, what did she want now? It was ridiculous. And so I remember everybody was looking at me like, don't you cough, don't you dare cough. You are not coughing, Leslie. And I remember I was like, oh, that's all. If someone tells you not to cough, all you want to do is cough. So it was miserable. I was just breathing into a pillow for I think five minutes minutes with her knocking. But over time, it gets kind of hard because everybody is getting annoyed with her, but then she would have her good days and everybody would then feel super bad for getting super annoyed with her. So it always ended up being this constant loop. So she was part of the group. She was always invited to things, but then people would complain about it. I just could go on and on, but I know how they felt because that's how I felt. I felt constantly guilty, but also miserable. She was somebody who exhausted friendships. So spring break comes around and there's only a few of us that stick around. So it's me, Aubrey, and Bobby. Y'all know Bobby from my last video. We decide that we're going to book a hotel in St. Pete and just drive ourselves down, stay there for a few nights and that's our spring break. Not a cool one, I know. But after it split three ways, with Bobby putting the money down for the hotel on his credit card and the fact that he was driving us there and back and all around throughout those days, each of our shares was going to be $80. So I give him my contribution and my mom actually does pay for me and she gives him a full hundred because he's... We, we just love Bobby, okay? Bobby's the best. And she doesn't end up paying, so we're waiting on that to come in. And what she ends up doing is pretty much during the trip, hands him a, like just a handful of change, it's less than a dollar, and says, You're welcome, we're about to go through some tolls. And it gets really awkward, and I try to step in and say, Hey, like, I paid my $80 and you know look what he had to do he had to put his card down for the hotel you know he's out $80 and her response is well I'm sorry that I don't have a mom that will buy stuff for me well if you didn't have the money to why did you agree to go on this vacation and even worse than that Bobby found a $20 bill on the ground and she said that was her contribution and she should be happy that he, she's not making him split the 20 with her. Here's your lucky day. You're still out $60, Bobby. Did you ever get it back? I don't think so. I am now disgusted by her. You can mess with me all you want. You can't mess with Bobby. Bobby is too nice of a person and I'm just, I, I'm one of those people where I get all mama bear. So I am so over this, but it doesn't matter. We had already signed the agreement. Now, I remember us collectively as other girls were thinking, do we do this, do we not? But, but when the time came, we felt like such mean people booting her out, we felt like we did have to live with her. But we would be in separate rooms, so we told ourselves we would get through this. So summertime comes, I get to relax a little, and then I come my junior year, and she beats me to the dorm room. So I remember I come in, 
and she said, oh, don't worry. My mom and I, or maybe it's her dad, but like me and my parents, we stocked up the bathroom. Um, I got you all set. So I go into the bathroom and this is what I see. Okay. One bottle of Febreze on the toilet and then there is one hand soap and it's, it's this hand soap. It's not like the big tub of hand soap that you also get to refill. No, it's just one hand, hand soap thingy. And then it's one box of Kleenex. And that was her only contribution to the bathroom for that entire year. Whenever we needed a contribution to the common room, her excuse was, <clears throat> I already just spent $20 at Walgreens. To kind of lay out a timeline, the first month was tolerable. Second month, it's okay, it's okay. By the third month, I was the babysitter. Hey guys, so I need to address something in my intro and you can definitely skip through this part. I don't care. I'm gonna put a link down there if you just wanna jump to the story. But some drama did go down with my first story and so I wanted to talk about it. I'm gonna try my best because it's almost two in the morning <laughs> I was drinking margaritas earlier, so my voice is a little hoarse, and I spilled half a margarita on me, like down me, and so uh, I'm a little sticky. I feel like this is more my problem than your problem, but I'm going to take care of my problem once I get off camera. I don't know why I had to tell you guys that I'm sticky, but like, I'm really, really sticky, but she outs herself as the roommate. Guys, it was me. I'm the crazy roommate. It's me, me, me. She then gets my video flagged. Now, I'm not for sure if it was her alone, her family, friends, like some collaborative effort, but I'll tell you that I've never had a video flagged before. And I've been doing some pretty good juicy story times and nope, never flagged. So for for there to be the, I'm not for sure what she's saying, but for her to give out the perception that just happened to get taken down because it was so mean, well, who would care? She would care. Why, why I stayed roommates with this girl? Okay, I have so much to share with you. And pretty much this video is going to be mini story times of examples of why she drove me crazy. Or maybe this is more of how crazy is she? So it was Halloween time and we got invited to a house party and we were all so excited. We all dressed up. I was a sexy pirate. We drink a lot, it's fine, we have a DD. But while she's drunk, she decides that she's going to try weed for the first time. I'm not gonna be a blunt or a pipe. It's gonna be a bong, a bong. And what do you know? She becomes a lifeless body. So eventually, we don't know what to do with her. We all gotta go home mixing the motion of a car, being drunk on alcohol, and then smoking a bong. Do you know where this is going? Because let me tell you, her lifeless body became a lifeless body that was projectile vomiting. So I'm sitting there just squatting halfway in the car, holding a throw up bag while her lifeless body is just puking and then lying back down, puking, puking. I don't know, I had to keep up. I didn't know where she was next going to be puking. So it's down her outfit, it's all on my arms, it's dripping from my hair and I'm just taking it because I know, I mean, you can throw up in a car, but when, when you're you can't throw up that much in a car. She was the loudest, loudest girl that I've ever met. I remember it was to a point where people would always hear her through the walls. One time she was in an elevator shaft up on the third floor 
and somebody sitting in a chair in the lobby. That person could hear her. And so it didn't matter if you were that far away or talking to her this far in front of your face, she would scream at you, just scream, and super inconsiderate. If she was the only one with an 8 a.m. class, it didn't matter, because she was up, so who cares if somebody else is sleeping? So when she would get her clothes out of her drawers, I don't know what she did, if she just shoved them back into the dresser, um, or when you go to a door, you know, you twist the knob when you go to shut it. Oh, that didn't exist. You just open and slam, open and slam. And then I remember I shared a wall with her, but while she was awake doing her thing, I'm just lying there. I look at my phone to check the time, and I see my other roommates have already texted me, is Aubrey up because I can hear her. We would tell her about it, and she would giggle and say she was sorry, but also that she was loud and proud. I was very tired. And remember when I told you she was cheap? She loved to steal. Now, in the beginning, the stealing wasn't as big of a deal that she would do. She would steal from one of the roommates, and then she would come in my room giggling, thinking it was so funny, as if she was so cool and sly, and it was just some joke to trick this roommate as if she were stupid, when I remember that roommate was coming to me saying, hey, I keep noticing my stash is going down awfully fast, and I would just tell her, yeah, Aubrey's taking from you. One time, because like I said in the beginning, she's as blind as a bat, she starts stealing and rummaging through her stuff not realizing that the roommate is in her bed. And she's wide awake just watching her do this. Just rummage through this, rummage through that. And then finally my roommate speaks to him and goes, so what are you doing? <laughs> and Aubrey jumps so high up. When it came to roommate responsibilities, if you asked her to do something, you had a 50% chance of her actually doing it. We shared a bathroom and there was a trash can that I provided. Every single week, I was always the one who would take out the trash. So I remember I would bring it up to her, but I was so bad at confrontation and I, I don't like to pick a fight. So, but I would bring it up in a joking way or just a really casual way and she would just always brush me off again and again. Well, one time the trash can just got so overflowing, but I was so mad, I was not gonna take out the trash. So finally, I have to ask her, hey, can you take out the trash this time? Oh, ooh, what? Oh, sure, no problem. I get back to the dorm. I have five minutes to run in and run out. I go to the bathroom and I look, and there's a new bag in the trash can, but there's trash all the way around the perimeter of it. I went to my internship and I had some downtime, so send her a text and I said, hey, there's trash on the floor around the trash can, what? Yes, it was overflowing, so when I pulled the bag up, trash did fall onto the ground. And that trash was your trash. So when you get back to the room, you can pick up your trash off the ground and throw it away. What's the point of taking out the trash if you're just gonna take 90% off? <laughs> Another thing about the bathroom that was really unfortunate is we didn't have fans. I'm not for sure why, but when we took showers, everything would get all steamy because there was nowhere for the steam to go. So we all agreed that we would open the door while we took a shower. Aubrey would not follow this rule, and she loved to have her showers extremely, extremely hot. There, there was not even the cold setting on. It was just all the way hot. That made the bathroom so fogged up and all the steam in the air, it, you know, when it's just trapped, it turns into liquid. So I remember the toilet would be wet, the shower mat, that was really wet. So I think she just dumped water on that. The countertops would be wet and I remember I had all my electronics. So I had a hair dryer, 
I had a hair straightener, and they were coated in water. I can't just run into the bathroom, slip and fall, and die. Oh, okay, yeah, I understand. She never once showered with the door open. Now, I do understand that it's not my place to judge how somebody flirts or, you know, their needs and their wants or anything like that, you know, I'm not picking on her as, you know, she's not wife material and all that. But I remember she would include me in this, and so I'm gonna tell it. So she loved Tinder. And Tinder, you got no good guys on Tinder. But every time I told her this, she didn't care. She would always ask me to help her with a response. And I would try to give her my best advice, whether it was, you know, a suggestion on how to reply, a pep talk for a date, helping her out with this and that. And you're taking a nap, and then she turns on the light. I don't care if you're sleeping. I have a date. You have to help me choose what to wear. It just got exhausting because I was expected to tend to every tiny, I don't it's not a relationship, just every tiny connection that she had of a boy in her life. I needed to be there as some sort of guidance. So I would tell her, you know, what I think she should say. She never, not once, took my advice. She would pretty much always say the exact opposite. And she never was able to see a pattern here. So what would happen is she would text a boy for maybe about two days, and then the boy would receive a long text message. Long. I'm not someone that you can hook up with. I'm better than that. I want a relationship and I just want to know, are you down for this relationship or are you just wasting my time? So then that boy would stop talking to her and then I had to hear all about how he was such a little fuck boy. Fuck boy, fuck boy, fuck boy, fuck boy! He's such a fuck boy! And the cycle would just repeat again and again and there was a lot of together time. So I tried to do different things that would make me branch out and kind of have some space with Aubrey. But then I would receive a text message that said, we need to talk. So then I would meet with her and she would be asking if, you know, if she, why she was being excluded from things, if I was mad at her, if the group was mad at her. And it was so hard because how do you tell someone that they're freaking annoying? I remember the time the group got really annoyed by her. So annoyed that they, they were just pissed. And I was so tired and exhausted of having to deal with her. I pretty much, you know, laid the responsibility in their hands and said, y'all need to talk to her. I'm throwing in the towel, I'm done. So they decide that they're going to do an intervention. And it gets bad. It starts going on into just being attacking her because they're all just have this built up anger towards her that it just starts getting aggressive. One girl says to her face, you're so annoying. You make me want to shoot myself. And I'm just in my bedroom listening, thinking, oh God, oh God, oh God because now Aubrey's gonna need therapy from this. <laughs> and guess who the therapist is? Me. <laughs> Last time I talked about how the friend group wanted to have some type of intervention with her, but it was kind of an intervention gone wrong. And I can't remember, because I remember that there were like two intervention things that we did, where there was the intervention and things got better, and then things got worse. So then we had another intervention and she would talk about the friend group on Yik Yak. Yeah, do you guys remember Yik Yak? And she would post about how her whole friend group ditched her. There was no reasoning. She was such a good person. She had no idea why that this friend group had no desire to be friends with her anymore. And then a lot of awkwardness and then feeling bad and then everything got back together. And then we just felt like total bitches, so we decided to room with her senior year. Yeah. Honestly, she would have been tolerable if it wasn't just for just a few little things. She was utterly disgusting. Now, I'm gonna tell you right from the get-go that I was messy. I was messy. And when I say messy, 
I mean that I had too much stuff and there was clutter and I wasn't always the best at putting everything back. Okay, but you know, my dirty clothes were in the laundry basket. My trash was in the trash can. But when I'm talking about her being filthy, I mean she was dirty and it was gross. Senior year, she finally discovered contacts and realized that it's kind of an inconvenience to everybody else to be completely blind. <laughs> so she had the dailies and that is when you pop them in the morning and then at night you take them out and then you dispose of them. The definition of dispose was a little unclear to her. So instead of taking these contacts out and putting them in the trash can, she would just put them on the floor. And none of us knew that she was doing this. So one time I come into her room and I look and there's all these dry, crunchy contact lenses from days, just weeks, just chilling on her floor. <laughs> she didn't really seem to care about germs, especially when dealing with our communal bathroom sink. Usually somebody stores a toothbrush like in a cup where they keep it away from everything or they'll put some type of cap on the bristles to protect it. No, no, this is kind of how it went down. Brush, 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 set it on the sink. There would be like a lot of other random things that she felt like the sink was a good home for. Like a used razor, or one time walking in where she had dropped a potted plant and just walked away. Or her nose ring that was jammed up with her boogers, just casually putting it right there. And then we had a cleaning service, and so the lady ended up accidentally throwing it away. And her response was just calling her a maid. I remember when it was past midnight, sometime really late, and she bursts through my door and tells me all of a sudden that a Tinder guy that she's never met before is coming to our room and that I needed to clean the bathroom because it was filled with my Seeing as this Tinder date showed up with blood on his shirt, I would say he didn't really care. And yes, she is still really freaking cheap. She burst through our common room door, panting, just hugging onto this blender. And she goes on to say, I saw it in a pile right outside of a dorm room with the door open, as in people were making multiple trips in and out. So she grabbed it and just ran. It's already bad enough to steal something from someone that you don't know. It's even worse at the end of the year to try to sell it. Did I tell you that she thought it would be a good idea to work at the same internship as me? Aubrey didn't know anything about social media, in particular Instagram, but she managed to convince them that that was the job for her. So what she would do is then she would use the password to log on to the company's Instagram account and then go visit her personal page and like all of her photos. And did I tell you that this was for a parenting magazine? So the magazine had to change their Instagram password and then I would hear her in class. Oh my God, yeah, I'm so good at social media that I actually do it as an internship for this magazine and I'm the best Instagrammer they've ever seen. They give me compliments all the time. They've never seen so many likes. I'm so happy that she told the company we were best friends and roommates. Oh, oh, no, it gets even worse when it comes to my personal Instagram. Also, follow me on Instagram. She would go to my Facebook page, look up my followers and my following, go down the line of them and just go follow, 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 follow. She followed my sorority sisters, boys that I went on like one date with, people from my high school, and also my cousin who lives in freaking Pennsylvania. I don't mean to be rude here, but that's freaking creepy. Fashion is my passion. Hmm, how do I explain this? Fashion is my passion. Hmm, I don't know how to do an intro to this article. 
Fashion is my passion. Because she liked Cosmo 17 and Vogue on Facebook, she decided that she was going to pursue a fashion writing career. I thought it would be a nice thing to do to include her in one of my YouTube videos and do kind of like an outfit of the day type thing, you know. Hashtag OOTD. I told her about it. She was definitely on board and she needed help picking out her outfit. So I raid her closet and I mix and match all these pieces together and explain why this is perfect for being functional and cute and matching, all of all of this little fun stuff. I was got really involved and excited about this because I also take my OOTD very seriously. <laughs> Instantly she says that she is inspired to do her own fashion article piece on this outfit. And so she was wondering if there could be extra media done showcasing her ensemble. And so I was excited to do that. So we did the video and then we had to do some photo portions for the thumbnail and the Instagram advertisement and also her article. Remember I spend all this time putting her in different poses and locations, making sure like every little strand of hair is perfect. We swapped places, I gave her the camera and I did all of these poses. And by now I was about 20 minutes late to class. Not what I had in mind. So I was like, okay, well now I gotta go. So I walk off to class, I'm scrolling through my phone and I look at all the photos of me and my hair is in my face, I'm either squinting, there is our stuff that we set down in the background of my photos and then I go to her photos and they are perfect, flawless, beautiful. I was kind of miffed by all this but at the same time I should not have expected anything more. She's happy, I'm gonna make myself happy. I'm gonna work and create this video. So create it, post it, done. Then she releases the article and I'm curious to see what her interpretation is and what how what words she would use to describe it and actually explain in detail to the audience about this being fashion. Because fashion is more than just saying you love fashion. Turns out there was no point in me reading her work because it was literally my interpretation of the outfit word for word, but I wasn't quoted. Her name was on the article. I'm so happy at this point because she's told me she wants to apply to all the magazine positions that I've been wanting to apply to for years. And she'll be using her clips for her resume. But I mean, it's not like I really had a chance. Have you seen the recommendation letter that she wrote for herself? I can't compete with that. That's just too good. Okay, well before ending this video, I should probably acknowledge the positives about Aubrey. Like the one time she treated us to donuts. Okay, I gotta go to class. There are the donuts. Uh, I should probably let them know. You're welcome. Oh wait, wait, wait. Okay, that will work for Instagram. Hashtag best roommate. <laughs> okay. mildly entertaining. And now it was so great to see how open Aubrey had become. You know how you're nice to someone so they keep doing favors for you? And how easily her friendship could be purchased. Well, she drives me around in her car. I mean, he buys me shots. I still need to use her laundry card. But at least she's nice to her family. <laughs> one-time thing. I totally used my uncle's death as an excuse to get a better grade on my exam. Ugh. <sighs> well, one time I was with my grandma going to a grocery store and she was in her walker and she was really slow so I kind of just kept walking and then I left her in the parking lot and then- Stop talking! I guess the best word to use by now was trapped. I felt very, very trapped with the girl who lived with me, took classes with me, did an internship with me, and had the same friends. It was great. It was so great. Now I do want to admit that she did have one true friend, and I remember it was really sad because senior year her mom passed away. When I went to console her, I didn't really know what to say because it was really awkward. 
So I just talked about myself. I judge myself. So I'm gonna have to tell you this mini story time to make the rest of the story make sense. So I was best friends with Bobby. Y'all remember Bobby? And he was best friends with Marty. So when Bobby graduated and left, it was pretty much like, well, you know, here's the replacement, Bobby. Here's Marty. So now it's Leslie and Marty together. And I remember telling Bobby, no, he's not going to replace you. I don't like him as much. But I did end up becoming friends with Marty. He was no Bobby, but I liked Marty and I trusted Marty and we were really great friends. So he definitely knew my struggles with my roommate and he wasn't a big fan of her as well. So a few years back, there was this Apple iPhone update where once you put it on your phone, people weren't really receiving each other's text messages. It was really weird. So Aubrey would send group texts or direct texts trying to include Marty in these hangouts. And Marty would say, oh, I never got your text. And she would believe him. However, he didn't even have an iPhone. And he also had a nickname for her um, in regards to her body. And it wasn't the best name. I'm not going to repeat it, but it was the nickname he created for his roommates to refer to her as. Long story short, Aubrey is very clueless in a lot of these situations and had no idea her effect on a lot of people, including Marty, who did not really want to hang out with her. A lot of times, anytime a hangout did happen and he invited her to things, I remember him just saying back to the group how sorry he felt for her. Marty thought it would be a good idea to set me down on my bed with all of the pictures of me and my boyfriend behind me and tell me that he is in love with me. Like, why do boys do this? I don't understand. I did reject him. I was very nice about it. But I mean, I also had a boyfriend. A few weeks went by and honestly, things were just back to normal. I mean, I was a little weirded out, but I mean, it's Marty. I've been friends with him for a while. But then, I don't know, his self-esteem just couldn't handle it. And he decided to become angry and my arch nemesis. I mean, he might have been 5'2", but he was 5'2 of anger. <laughs> His first attempt at hurting me was making sure I was not invited to the Gasparilla Parade with our friend group. However, I had already made plans. Didn't affect me. <laughs> I don't know if he thought this was a great excuse to try to make sure Aubrey didn't come because she was annoying or just causing more riffraff because he didn't understand that I had other plans. But he also disinvited Aubrey. And you know what I did? I bawled my eyes out. I was so afraid that they were gonna start bullying her and making sure she was kicked out of everything because the only reason they had tolerated her so much from the beginning was because she was kind of my roommate and listed as my friend. And this just got completely turned around, but the thing is, is that when Marty and I did have the fallout, I remember telling Aubrey, don't hang out with Marty, you don't wanna hang out with him, he's not a good friend. And to be honest, both of us, Marty and me, didn't want to be Aubrey's friend. However, I knew what Marty was capable of, and I can vouch that I was always still a good friend to Aubrey, and I was afraid of what he would do and how he would treat her. And on March 17th, 2016, I knew the fallout had happened. Marty decided to sit Aubrey down and tell her everything I felt, everything I said, everything I did, everything. And I remember looking at that text and I just knew. And I told Bree, hey, this is happening. I can feel it in the text. And this happened to be a really hard week for me because I ended up getting a false positive on a blood test result where the doctors had to call me to retake the test because they told me that my blood wasn't clotting. And while I was just waiting it out for her to get back to the room, I realized out of all my friends, she was the only one who really didn't follow up with me or console me about those test results. She just cared about herself and I was done. Okay, I just got done talking to Marty. And sometimes you do things and you don't invite me to them purposely. Wait, wait, is that like your opening line? Because last time I checked, 
I wake up and you're there. I go to class and you're there. I'm at an internship and you're there. And you're gonna give me beef for not always wanting to hang out with you? By now, I have this built up anger that honestly, I unleash it. I was scary, but on you know, I didn't call her names. I was very honest with everything. And I try my best to always think before I spoke. But everything that I told her in the past that she's done, she denied it. Out of sight, out of mind. We got into a screaming match where it was more me screaming than her. And I just knew I had to put an end to this. So I kicked her out of my room and I didn't talk to her since. And then she made a point to whine to all of our friends and tell everybody on campus People like my sorority sisters or my friends that had transferred. They all needed to know. And then we got the tweets. Lots and lots of tweets. Oh, tweet only deed everywhere because there's no one else for her to talk to. Probably had about a month and a half left until graduation. And living in silence was doable, but it's not fun sharing living quarters where you hear her and she hears you talk about things or sharing a bathroom and having to coordinate that without ever speaking. Thank goodness the other roommates were my friends and not her friends, but we didn't gang up on her or anything like that. Like, let's make that clear. And Aubrey, it could have been different if you hadn't subtweeted our fourth roommate. During this time, she finally meets a boy from Tinder who is interested in talking and hanging out with her more than the regular two day duration. Great, I'm super happy for her. And then we start seeing this boy all the damn time. And because none of us are talking to her, we have no idea when he's gonna come in. Because we're girls, we don't think anything of it when we walk around in our bra and underwear or being in the bathroom with the door open. It's kind of just a girl thing. My favorite thing was when he walked in and saw my boobs. Aubrey was the only one who finished her classes on a Wednesday. So she'd have him over on a Thursday, still a school night, and have him come over and he was loud and he would talk until two in the morning. I don't know what to say. We're dating now and that's just kind of what happens. Yeah, I know that kind of happens. I have a boyfriend. I mean, I never got upset with you when you had your guys over. Guys? Do you mean the one time my boyfriend came over for a weekend? We honestly were really happy in the beginning because Aubrey would always make these first dates be in our dorm room where the guy would always know where we lived and we lived on the bottom floor with this big huge window. And we kept telling her how dangerous that was and that we don't know these guys that she's bringing in. So we were honestly really happy when she met this nice guy. But really, it's the first thing that comes up when you Google search him. It's okay, because after three weeks, he ended it. And then there were tweets everywhere, everywhere. Finally, it is graduation weekend and I am so excited to move out of that dorm and never see Aubrey's face again, ever again. So when you move out of a dorm, you're pretty much given a time limit to have all your stuff removed and have everything clean. If you fail to do so, they have no problem with charging you, especially my university. I bet you guys know where this is going. This is how Aubrey decided to leave the bathroom for me and my mom to clean up. You can subtweet me until the day that I die if you want. You can talk all the shiz about me, but you are not going to do that to my mom who has been outstandingly kind to you, providing bathroom dorm room essentials every time, helped with the move out process of moving your boxes to storage, providing you with boxes, and scrubbing the common room floor to make sure that nobody got fined. You don't mess with my mom. But it's okay, Aubrey. Mom and I, we did not clean your side. And we made sure that the university knew that that was your mess. There's nothing more to tell. I think I'm done. I'm done! I now have closure with the situation where I finally got to share my side of the story and share with you guys what had been going on with me. Because as you can see, I was not very happy in all of my YouTube videos that I posted in college. But now I am! So what'd you think? Did you like it? Like, did you physically click that like button? And if you've had an experience with your own psycho roommate, I'd love to know. Leave it in the comments. I read all my comments and I would love a good laugh and just to see, was your psycho roommate worse than mine? Because I feel like mine was worse, 
but it was my fault because I allowed her to stay as my roommate. And I will take full accountability for that. That was my bad. Now, I do wanna explain why I look different in the story time footage, because I can't deny it. <laughs> I look younger, hotter, and blonder with what you just saw. And the reason for that is, like a year after I graduated college, I recorded that story time video. It was in a four part series, but the quality wasn't there, like with the audio and the keywords, that the YouTube algorithm just squashed it. And I don't know, like I think it's a good story time, but like people were not getting recommended the video, so nobody was watching it. So I decided to do what Disney does, where they remaster their old works. And I think it just fit perfectly in being stitched together in one big video. It flowed nicely. So I'm just really happy to re-show it to the world. Hopefully it didn't make anybody mad if they were like an OG fan band member and they're like, I've already seen this, you know. But um, yeah, that that is why. And that is why you can tell <laughs> that when I told that story, I was a bit more hot-headed Certain things I definitely was overreacting on. Like when I looked back at the footage, I was like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> like I look bad in my opinion. I mean, I look cute, but I also looked bad with like how overly dramatic I was about certain things. I was younger, I was more mature, and this experience was still so raw for me that I was heated. Now it's like whatever, but if you do want me to like upload a reaction video or an update of what I now know about what's going on with my psycho roommate, I will do so, but this video is very long already, and I am very surprised if you are still here watching me. But uh, yeah, okay. Thank you so much for the love and support. I love you. I mean it. Bye, guys.